This is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about Quad Helix. Hey, what's old is new again, and I never stopped using these. I think they're great appliances. I think people are starting to find their use again. So I just wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you to Specialty Appliances for sending me the demo of this model so that I could teach you guys how to uh, design one and how to, to deliver it in a patient. And we'll talk a little bit about indications for use. But basically, this is a great expansion appliance if you're looking for something that you don't have to regularly activate. Um, everything is built really into the design of the appliance and it just kind of does its job. Now, you can't leave this thing in forever. You're talking probably three months or so, plus or minus max. So you need to give this to a pretty compliant patient. Also, it does leave a pretty gnarly imprint on the tongue. Um, it's not the most popular appliance because it can be, you definitely get some discomfort on the tongue initially. You can get some cuts. So um, you want to make sure you pick the right patient and brief them accordingly. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, you're going to go ahead and order a quad helix appliance. And you can go ahead and deliver these in adults too. So that's totally fine. To deliver them into adults that have like a crossbite or a narrow upper arch. Um, I'll take these any day over bending wires and doing cross elastics. So, um, and you can have um, buckle hooks soldered on the side of them so that you can attach braces to them. You can also use this as pre orthodontic therapy and deliver this in. Um, kids or even adults before you do aligners. If you want to get some great expansion, have the aligners go quicker. Um, there's also a mandibular version of this appliance. Um, I think we call it a W arch, if I remember correctly. Um, and similar but different, you're going to get mostly tipping with these appliances, you know, not necessarily bodily movement. But um, for any case, they're really great. So basically what I do before I design and deliver one is I go ahead and I use my bully gauge, which is right here. And I take measurements at the point where the wire exits the solder joint um, here and here. Okay. And then like this, I'm kind of doing this without looking, but in any case, you can see what I'm doing. Take the measurement. In any case, this was, I think it was about 34 millimeters. You also want to take the measurement at the tip of the points here. Um, I think this one was about 21 millimeters. You're looking for, I would say, about four millimeters of expansion built into the appliance, four or five millimeters. Honestly, the easiest way that I just expand it, and sometimes they come pre-expanded um, from the labs that you need to see. I mean, obviously, if it's coming on and off the model passively, it's not expanded. It's not going to do anything. So you have to build the expansion into it. They may pre-expand it for you. So um, figure out what you're getting. But it's pretty simple. Um, this is actually cemented on here right now, and it's permanent cement, so I can't pull it off. But um, if, it, if I was able to pull it off, I'd grow, grab it and I'd hold the bands each in one finger and I would pull gently um, until I got that four millimeters of expansion. Some people will use a three prong plier to do it, but for me, the pull technique works better. Um, evenly pulling and getting that four millimeters of expansion both here and here. Although if you want more expansion in the anterior region, you can pull up here a little bit more. And if you want more in the posterior region, then you're going to pull a little bit more down here. So there's not an exact science. And the beauty is you're going to see these patients every three to four weeks anyway. So you want a little bit more expansion than you're looking for, ideally. Obviously, other things that you're going to be doing is checking the buccal roots as you go along, checking for mobility, sensitivity, things like that. Um, bite opening up, a couple of things you'll be looking for. For the most part, it's a pretty easy appliance once they get used to it. The first week, like I said, is rough, but that's pretty much it. That's what a quad helix is. So a great universal expansion appliance, and it's pretty much idiot proof. You really can't screw this up as long as you don't leave it in too long. So definitely three to four weeks is max. I mean, if you had a super constricted palate, um, you know, maybe you could take it out and reactivate it. You can even reactivate it in the mouth, but I really think that four millimeters is really quite enough. If you're needing so much more, you probably don't want tipping anyways. Um, you probably believe in a growing child want to consider sutural, you know, actual skeletal expansion. Um, and in an adult, you want to be considering surgery. So that's pretty much it. That's how you use a quad helix. Hopefully that helps. And thanks again to Specialty Appliances for the demo. Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions. And we're here today to talk a little bit more about activating the quad helix. I know you saw in my previous video, that the model was cemented, so I wasn't able to show you how to activate it. Um, I just told you theoretically how to do it, but I did get another 
uh, model sent to me by Specialty Appliances Laboratory. So thank you very much to Olivia and Scott for sending me the other model so I can show you all how to activate it. So it's really easy, you're just gonna pop it off the model. Um, so let me just take a step back. Like I said in the other video, most of the time they're gonna send it to you not activated. That means you're gonna have to activate it yourself. Don't freak out, it's super easy. You saw the video earlier, how you do it. It really depends on where you want the expansion, but usually just gonna give a bilateral tug to the molar bands to activate it about four millimeters. Make sure you use a bully gauge in order to measure it the first few times because you're not gonna really um, know how much to do it. Then when it comes time to actually cement it, you, you will have to you know, constrict it a little bit in order to get it on. One cool way you can do it is to throw like an orthodontic rubber band around this area up here to keep it um, condensed so it's easy to cement. But anyways, all you're gonna do is give a little tug to the molars, okay? That's it, that's all you're gonna do. And now when you line it up next to the model, you'll see it's just slightly wider, okay? So it's gonna be a little tricky. You're gonna to have to load your band cement and then cement it at the same time in order to get it to seat. So like I said, the rubber band technique works really well, but you know, you need four-handed dentistry. You're gonna go ahead and band it. Oopsies, see how tricky it is? Of course, I'm not really using cement here, I'm just smushing it on, but you can see it's got activation, okay? Because it likes to pop off. So definitely make sure that the patient's biting down hard and on cotton rolls until it fully cements. And that's how you activate a quad helix. Remember, keep an eye on your patient. These things work relatively fast. You wanna make sure you recall them every three to four weeks. You're looking for maybe 20% more expansion than you actually want. Sometimes you may have to pop it off and reactivate it, but usually one time is enough. I wouldn't leave it in any more than three to four months max because it will push teeth outside the bone if it's really activated and you leave it in too long. Really, that's pretty much it. Yeah, go a little bit wider and then afterwards, if you need to maintain your width, um, you can always make like a Nance or a transpallid arch or something like that, okay? Because this has activity. Or you could make this passive and leave it in, but. I think it's better just to put something else in. Anyways, that's pretty much how you activate a quad helix. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you.